Imagine being in a post-apocalyptic time imprisoned by a tyrannical ruler. You are forced on a high-speed chase across the wasteland to join a war between the freedom seekers and the brutal leader. This is what happened in today's action-adventure sci-fi film titled Mad Max Fury Road, released in 2015. Without further ado, let's get started. Environmental disasters and nuclear war have caused an apocalypse that has left the world resource poor. Water and gasoline are guarded by warlords who control different regions of a post-apocalyptic wasteland. One of the main warlords is Immortan Joe, who rules over a fortress known as the Citadel and commands an army of devoted followers. To keep his position of authority and suppress any opposition among his followers, he uses his control over food, gasoline, and water. Our protagonist, Max, is a lone warrior being haunted by his past. He failed to protect some innocent people, including a little girl. He sees visions of them, scaring him even in the glare of daylight. One day, Max is captured while being pursued by war boys, a group of fanatically loyal soldiers serving the Immortan Joe. They saw him as a valuable resource of blood, which they used to transfuse the sick and injured war boys. Max tries to escape the capture by dodging the war boys and making his way out of the cave, but to his bad luck, the passage he chose has a dead end. Max is taken inside the cave again. We are then introduced to Furiosa, who serves as Immortan Joe's trusted commander and driver of his war rig, a massive armored truck used to transport Joe's gasoline and water supply. Being a skilled warrior and a determined woman, Furiosa fears no one but she seems to have a tragic past as we see her left arm missing. One day, when Joe sends off a war rig to bring back gasoline from Gastown and bullets from Bullet Farm, Furiosa finds an opportunity to carry out her plan. Midway through, Furiosa changes paths without telling the boys why she is going east instead of heading to the Gastown. When Joe sees Furiosa driving away from the actual route, he hurried to his harem, only to discover his wives are missing. Those wives are called Joe's breeders, who are held captive and forced to bear Joe's children against their will. To get the women to a safe haven known as the Green Place, Furiosa decided to sneak them out of Joe's fortress using the war rig. Joe sends forth his war boys to chase Furiosa and the women across the wasteland. One of the war boys, Nux, wants to join his warlord in the mission against Furiosa but he is instructed to stay in the cave because of his deteriorating health. Determined to die historically on Fury Road, Nux decides to take his blood bag with him in the war, so that his health is not compromised. Strapping Max to the car's front, Nux is all ready to impress his beloved leader, Immortan Joe. Seeing the vehicle of their town firing flares, the war boys inform Furiosa about the situation, to which she instructs him not to worry, as she has only chosen a detour. Things get worse for Furiosa when her war rig enters the territory of Buzzards, a group of fighters whose vehicles are covered in spikes and other weapons. Soon, the Buzzards approach Furiosa and begin to destroy their cars. Amid the fight between these two groups, another gang, including Joe and his war boys, arrive, aiming to kill the Buzzards before executing Furiosa. As chaos breaks out, Max finds himself in the middle of a bloody struggle between two rival gangs of fighters, evading explosives, fires, and gunshots coming at him from all directions. In the stench of smoke and gasoline and the constant threat of being overpowered by the thunderous sound of motors and gunfire, Max must rely on his combat skills to survive the fatal violence that surrounds him in the thick of insanity. After defeating the Buzzards, the war boys turn their attention to their new target, Furiosa. Suspecting the danger, Furiosa devises a cunning plan to use the incoming storm as a deviation against the war boys. Her plan works. However, in his effort to capture the women and impress Joe, Nux loses control and ends up crashing his car, causing him and Max to go unconscious. The following morning, Max opens his eyes and still finds himself chained to Nux. As there is no tool to cut the chain, Max is compelled to take Nux with him to the nearby area where the war rig is parked. Instead of just asking for him, Max points a gun at Furiosa and Joe's wives, one of which is pregnant with his baby. 
As Max struggles to break free from his chains, a sudden fight erupts between him and Furiosa, with their bodies locked in a desperate struggle for dominance. In a burst of rage, Max manages to overpower the fierce warrior, seizing control of the war rig and leaving the women stranded in the unforgiving wasteland. With the war boys coming close, the ladies have no choice but to run in the opposite direction. After running for a mile, the war rig stops, revealing that Furiosa has modified the setting that keeps her control over the vehicle. As the war rig can't move without Furiosa, Max has no other option but to allow the ladies to hop in. However, the danger still looms ahead. Before the group can reach their destination, they are approached by the bullet framer and the people eater with all their big rigs, polecats, and flamers. Nux, who managed to climb up the war rig earlier, encounters the women and Furiosa while Max is checking on the fuel. Calling him the old man's battle fodder, Splendid, the pregnant lady, tries to make him realize the cruelty of Immortan Joe. However, when Nux refuses to accept the allegations, Splendid throws him out of the rig. Being followed by three war parties, Furiosa finally reaches the hills, where she has made a deal with the biker gang. In exchange for letting Furiosa pass through the convoy without a hitch, the gang will receive 3,000 gallons of gasoline. Things get out of control when the bikers become enraged at Furiosa for bringing three uninvited war parties with her. Now, Furiosa is being chased not only by Immortan Joe and Bullet and Gasoline people, but also by the biker gang who want their gasoline at any cost. Meanwhile, Nux rejoins Immortan Joe and gains his trust by saying he was on the rig with his wives. Desperate to impress his leader and earn a place in Valhalla, Nux jumps on the rig but, to his bad luck, gets tripped and fails in his mission. During the escape, Splendid falls from the rig and gets accidentally crushed by Immortan Joe's car. Furiosa and the other wives may have left their enemies behind, but the pain of losing their beloved Splendid tears their hearts out. Meanwhile, Joe's rage boils over as he copes with the crushing blow of losing his unborn child. Thinking that their brutal leader won't let them live, one of the wives, Cheeto, decides to return and beg for mercy. However, others make her realize that they can't just give up their freedom and let Joe own them like things. After a while, when Max asked about Green Place, Furiosa responds that it is a long night run heading east. Although it isn't Max's destiny, he is ready to accompany the women to the lush and fertile land with abundant water and vegetation. To keep an eye on the incoming enemy, Capable decides to help Furiosa secure the back of the war rig. As she reaches the top, she is shocked to see Nux crying like a baby. Believing that he has failed to reach his ultimate goal, Valhalla, Nux thinks his life is messed up. Moreover, he holds himself responsible for the death of his leader's wife because his blood bag, Max, was involved in it. Instead of hurting Nux, Capable befriends him and shows him kindness and compassion. Receiving crucial emotional support from Capable, Nux doubts his own beliefs and finally realizes that life is more than simply following orders without question. It is nighttime, and both the parties are not giving up, with Furiosa and the women escaping for their lives while Immortan and his allies are still pursuing them. Things get worse when the war rig loses control and gets stuck in muddy water. Seeing the incoming vehicles, Max gets out of the rig and sets explosives on the ground, while we see the wives removing the extra tire to let the rig move quickly. As the rig trudged along for a few miles, the unforgiving land grabbed it yet again, forcing everyone to muster all their strength to break free from the clutches of the earth. When the war boys reach close to the bombs, their vehicles explode, causing Joe to wait there until the mess is cleared. Meanwhile, the bullet farmer decides to chase Furiosa alone. Capable finally tells everyone about Nux's presence on the war rig. Nux is impressed by her kindness, which has ignited in him a fierce determination to aid the women in their quest for freedom. While Nux tries to regain control over the rig, the bullet farmer approaches them and begins shooting. In retaliation, Furiosa uses a single bullet that not only destroys their light bulb, but also claims Bullet Framer's eyes. Enraged more than ever, the warlord unleashes his machine gun on the war rig. To finish the farmer bullet once and for all, Max decides to confront him alone. While the engine is cooling, Furiosa sees a massive blast, 
showing Max has pulled off his plan. Contrary to Furiosa's expectations, Max returns alive with his enemy's ammunition that will help the Freedom Seekers survive in the Wasteland. The sun has risen, but our heroes are still on their way to the Green Place. Our female warrior reveals she was born in Green Place, but was abducted. Since then, she never saw her family again. Soon, the Freedom Seekers reach a place that Furiosa remembers. When she gets out of the car and calls herself a Vuvalini and Jasaba's daughter, a bunch of women riding the bike appear and welcome their friend's only child. Furiosa is happy until she learns that Green Place no longer exists. After the water turned poisonous, the resident left the area in search of pure resources but couldn't survive the unforgiving wasteland. Only a few remained alive, including their leader Valkyrie and some other old Vuvalinis. Pulling herself together, Furiosa decides to travel across the salt in search of better. However, Max has a better suggestion. He thinks they can never find a place greener than Citadel, the cruel town where they escaped. When everyone realizes that Citadel is full of water, food, and fuel, they finally decide to take the risk. As Immortan Joe and his war boys are away from the city, it is an excellent opportunity for Furiosa to take control of the canyon. She can easily convince the sick war boys back home to support her against Immortan Joe's brutal rule. With Valkyrie on the bike, the travelers are all set up to change the lives of the people of Citadel and gain their freedom. When Immortan Joe witnesses Furiosa from afar, he immediately understands what they are after. With a mounting sense of danger gripping him, he unleashes the flares from his grasp, signaling to the other clans that danger looms on his throne. Being skilled fighters and survivors, the old Vuvalinis are more than ready to combat. As the enemies reach the rig, Nux steps forward and helps Furiosa speed up the vehicle. As the engines roar and the dust clouds rise, the wasteland is set for an epic showdown that will determine the fate of everyone. While Max uses his extraordinary combat skills to take down every single war boy in his way, Furiosa pilots the rig with proficiency and determination. Soon, the duo manages to attack Immortan Joe's car, killing him with their cleverness and willpower. Seeing their leader's face getting brutally ruined due to the accident, the war boys become aggressive, but they are nothing in front of our highly skilled heroes. As the chase comes to an end, Nux musters his courage and executes a selfless, brave deed, using his own vehicle as a weapon to take out a pursuing enemy. Although the survivors manage to escape, Furiosa gets severely injured in the process. During a fight, Furiosa was stabbed with a pole, puncturing her lung, impairing her ability to breathe. Max offered aid, performing makeshift tracheostomy with the aid of a knife and a tube. When this couldn't stabilize Furiosa, Max transfuses his blood into her body. The survivors triumphantly make their way back to the Citadel, where they are welcomed by the crowd. Seeing their cruel leader dead, the war boys not only surrender, but also stand up in support of Furiosa and the people of Citadel. After prolonged enslavement, the people were finally able to drink whenever they wanted. The movie ends with Max experiencing a bittersweet moment as he decides to set out into the harsh wilderness once more instead of leading the people of Citadel with Furiosa. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the bell notifications so you won't miss any of our new videos. See you in the next one.